Brother Bill, come on. Okay. Brother Green, thank you. Good morning, everyone, and a Merry Christmas to all of you. We're so happy to be back again this morning here at the Tabernacle to be with this lovely little group. Brother Green and I were just discussing in there. Uh, Mary said, Brother Bill, you got anything on your heart this morning? I should just cry and say, man, that's all. We always have that. And so that's in common to us, that we have him. Got in late yesterday from Dallas where we had a, one of the most glorious meetings. And the thing we've been praying for now is fixing to happen. It's already in session right now. That is for a nationwide revival. All the ministers yesterday, the, or the last few days that's had any size and caliber ministers or services, we met together at, at Dallas for this uh, uh, convention. And there was some 15, 18 ministers there that, that has a ministry that carries up anywhere between three and 15,000, maybe 20,000 people. Raymond T. Ritchie, for instance, and Bosworth, and, and Old Roberts, and Jackson, and all those fellows there. Brother Jackson, the other night in his meeting, had 500 receive the Holy Ghost at one time. Praise the Lord. So uh, that's um, just wonderful. And we all met together yesterday, uh, the other day, on a working agreement for the year that we believe that God is here to do a work and a stirring the world has never seen before. I believe, friends, that we're... We're just entering something wonderful. And these ministers who will probably have every night this next summer, if the Lord permits us, every night will be at least for anywhere from to be 15 or 16, maybe more than that big tent set that holds up to eight and 10,000 people around the United States at the same time. Oh, we just got to have revival now. It's already in session. Hundreds and hundreds are receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit coming into the kingdom of God now. It's not something that we even look forward for a little later on, but it, it's, it's already now. God's doing it right now. Yes, sir. I, yes, Brother Green. That's the thing that I always... Good, you know, Brother Green and I work together so well. He's so tall and I'm so short, so... I, <laughs> he picks the low fruit and I get all the high fruit. <laughs> Sometimes I have to have him shake some down. <laughs> I still haven't figured that out. Uh, the fire. We want it on the altar, don't we? <laughs> Amen. Well, you, the other night we were sitting thousands deep in there and all of them clapping their hands and praising God. We just had just a glorious time. We had fire right on the altar then. And we're very happy to announce this uh, coming summer for the revival. And I'll be with the church here with Brother Grimm and you all for the next eight or ten days, I guess, as far as I know, and want to be in every service that possibly can. Then um, we leave from there to the Houston, Texas, at the Coliseum. We've got a nice big building there that seats 17,000 people, and we're just expecting a great time. Tried to have a, all of us have a prayer line down there, but we just couldn't do it. One minister at one place, one another at the prayer line, but it just wouldn't work that way. It's just Brother Jaggers had to go ahead and say another thing I want to announce. Brother Jagger stood and took the stand like we did at Calgary. He, the missionary Baptists and the free will Baptists, and all, you know, Texas is full of Baptists. They stood for him, but the fundamental Baptists rolled up against the, the program. And all how they wrote him up in the paper and everything, well, he, they wrote him Bible questions, so he answered back, and they got a, if they had their own proof, then some bunch of political stand like, they wouldn't put it in the paper, so Brother Jaggers, we called a meeting there, and 75 cooperating ministers of the city came in together. We took a photostatic copy of it and said, is this freedom of speech? Is this freedom of press? Like that, and sent it out. And the paper lost 10,000 subscribers the next morning. And they come crying on their knees that we were published in the paper just freely. You don't have to pay us a penny. Oh, brother, listen, you church. One time we lived down by the railroad track. We don't no more. We live on Hallelujah Avenue now. Yes, sir. We rank into the millions. We used to be as only a few hundred of us, but we go into the millions, millions now. And united together with the most powerful church in numbers there is in the United States. That's right. All right. I guess in the world. Last year alone, we had a million five hundred thousand conversions. Think of that. A million five hundred thousand conversions in full gospel people. That is with the general orders last year. Oh, we're coming up now. And these little papers and things have been... They wouldn't talk about the Catholic people. They were afraid of them. 
See, they were afraid to do it. But we're numbering right on up there now. We got a right. Let's claim our God-given right. That's right. So we're going forward this year with God to be our help and our shield and call the try our best to have a revival. <clears throat> now, I, oh, up here. You all have to tell me when to stop. Up there. Right up there. All right. I can walk out this way and look back. And, um, so good. How many feels good for Christmas? Say amen. Oh, my, my. This is a time of rejoicing. The time of when all of us can come together and worship Christ. And I, I don't, haven't got a message, not a thing. I've just opened up the Bible here when he's talking there. I turned over here. I said, where's the birth of Christ? Nearly everybody's talking about that now. So I'll just have to read a little while and then find something. Just keep staggering along until the Spirit of the Lord <laughs> picks up something. Now, to start, let's begin at Luke, the first chapter of Luke. That's the beginning of the, the birth of Christ. And... We'll uh, read some in here and just teach some on the Word if we can. We don't know what the Lord will do for us, but we just trust that He'll give us a great blessing. Say, I heard your broadcast. It was fine. Just keep it going. Keep it going. Preach the Word. Just tell him, Brother Graham, in there, if there ever was a time that Christians need one another, it's right now. Amen. Right now. Whatever you do, lay aside everything, because I believe by the grace of God. I'll just talk on that a little bit in a few minutes. That how we, we need each other right now. The great, I believe that we're facing, are you listening to me? Yeah. All right. We're facing now looking at a great, this drama that's ever been set in all human history, working out here before us. The great a field of the world here and a drama that God is going to act out right now. That's, that's a startling to look around over the world and see how the thing is moving together. Oh, is something fixing to happen, friend. This is what we've talked about and said about it right now here. It's already starting everywhere, breaking out. There's a great picture. I like the picture to you this morning. I see a lamb out in the field to feed. The little fellow becomes nervous. He just, he wonders. Look over to reeds right behind him. I see a line slipping up really easy. Pat his tail on the ground, getting his feet ready for a spring. That's the church out there in the field. The darkness of communism is pushing all over the world, closing in like a great a shadow. And this is a long contrast. Take like before day. It's always the darkness before day because... The days of breaking, pushing the darkness, it's a law of contrast, you see, makes it the darkest before the day breaks. And we're in that same thing now. It's just the darkest before day, the great shadows of darkness is pushing in to fulfill the man of sin. Did you notice this very Christmas time, all the communist countries are, instead of sending out the Christ in the manger, they sent out little books of Stalin. Put Stalin's picture on him. The man who opposes himself above all is called God, and so forth. Getting a great part of the world into his clutches. And another thing then, that all these, that's to fulfill the scripture. And then again, I want you to notice another thing, one of the fulfilling. These people who are formal, and these formal churches, is rising up against the moon. And the Bible says they'd have a form of godliness, but would deny the power thereof from such turn away. And they're taking their stand. Communism is taking its stand. Praise God. The Holy Ghost is taking its stand. Amen. Yes, when the enemy comes in like a flood, then I'll raise up a standard against it. Amen. That's right. And the church has taken her stand. I mean the Holy Ghost Church. Now that's all I'm interested in, friends. And I'm here. Out there, I'm free for the stick, but in here, I'm interested in one thing, and that's God's born again church. That's right. That's what I'm interested in, anyhow. I'm not interested in bylaws and deacons and so forth like that, or orders of churches. I'm interested in the baptism of the Holy Ghost upon the church for this day that we're living in. Amen. That's the fundamental part, and that's what we're looking for. Just a word of prayer now. Heavenly Father, move down this morning into our midst. Grant it, Lord, and may the Spirit of God. Uh, take over the service. Bless uh, the work here, Lord. Bless our brother, uh, Brother Graham. 
God give him words of wisdom tonight at the radio broadcast. May he be able to to shake the people with by preaching the word. Grant it, Lord. May sinners weep, kneel down in the room, and give their hearts to Christ. If there be any unbelievers here this morning, or any that have not accepted Christ, may they come also. And now, start a revival in the hearts of the people this morning, Lord. May this be a renewing time, a time when the Spirit will be renewed. And, oh, Father, we pray it this way. Come get us by the hand, each one of us. Walk us down this lane here. Show to us this great picture that's set in order here. Revealing your secrets to the saints' hearts this morning. That we might see what's out here just before. And as we walk down then, Lord, in the armor of God, may we go as gallant soldiers to face the enemy. But how can we face him unless we know his technique? And help us this morning to understand and show us the, his foreground there so we'll know where to meet him. For we ask that in Jesus' name, amen. That's the second chapter. Let's read this. And it came to pass that in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus to all the world that they should be taxed. And this taxing was first made uh, by the governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph went also up from Galilee unto the city of Nazareth and to Judah, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days of her accomplishment, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling's clothes, and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for him in the inn. Now, just as a background, to, to we get up to the a part of it that I would use this morning, and all of you just let yourself be in the Spirit of the Lord. We are, today all over the world is being self, celebrated uh, the birth of Jesus, which now is just traditional. Jesus was not born on December the 5th or nothing like or December the 25th. We know that's impossible. The hills of Judea was full of snow at that time. So how could it be that Jesus commonly, by astronomers and so forth, and by all that was born in first around 1st of April, so when it was springtime. But this is a day which is all right, just set aside to worship uh, uh, in memorial of his uh, coming to the world. One of the greatest gifts that God ever gave to the world was Jesus Christ, that we know that. And now I want to speak this morning upon his deity. Who he is. So many had him a little baby laying out there in a cradle and so forth. Well, that, that was just one of the pictures, just one of the setting forth of the drama to bring it up to what he really is, his deity. And he said in the scriptures of his coming, he has been spoke up since the days of, of John, plumb back even into Genesis. It was prophesied that the woman's seed would bruise the serpent's head, promising this crowd, child, Christ Jesus. And he's been that all the prophets, most ever prophet that was ever uh, wrote in the Bible, spoke of his first and second advent when he has come to the world. Jesus comes three times. He came the first time to redeem his church. He comes the second time to receive his church. He comes the third time with his church. Everything in the Bible travels in Trinity, threes, but all in one Christ. He can remember the first time to re redeem his church. The second time to receive his church. The third time with his church as king and queen. Now, but on his first coming, we'll speak of just a little bit, and then on his being here, and then on his second coming. It, on his, and then on the third time, if the Lord willing. Now, in these days, there was a great persecution against the church. Uh, Caesar Augusta had made a great plan that he attacks all the people, and that was only done for one purpose, that God's great prophecy would be fulfilled. Only thing you have to do when you see something in the Bible that sounds just a little mystic and a little superstitious to you, 
Just give God a little bit of time. God's in no hurry. We're the one gets in a hurry. Just give God just a little bit of time, and you'll see the old prophetic wheels, cogs run right up into the picture. It'll develop. Just like a bringing up of a picture. Like someone was speaking the other day, he said, God, what was he? When he was back under millions and millions of years ago, when he was no, just like this space here. And then he gathered up into the Logos. And then he came from the Logos down into Christ. See, it's just God coming down like this to the earth, then going right back into God again. Don't you see what I mean? Just revolving, coming down from space, from uh, eternity, rolling together, coming down into the Logos, the Logos down into man, then returning right back again for one purpose, to redeem that man that had fallen. Now that's what he came for, to be a redeemer. And before God could be a redeemer, he had to be, according to the law, a kinsman redeemer. He had to be kin folks to us. And God, in the beginning, made his first man. He made him out of spirit. And spirit is the invisible part of man that you don't see. Now, God made man in his own image. Are you listening to me? All right. God made man in his own image. And God is a spirit, says the Bible. And the first man that was made had the government over all the creation, just like the Holy Spirit has government over the church today. He led the creation. He led the animals. But there was no man to feel the sorrow, so God made man out of the dust of the earth. And that man, he might have given him hands like a monkey. He might have given him feet like a bear. Whatever he did, he just stood it together and made a man. But this man... He put this immortal spirit that never dies into this man, and he become more than a brute. He became a man. Then this man here, that's what I think of atheists and some of them standing around arguing, but the hour has come when God shed forth his life. There's an hour here that when God's doing things. That's right. And so now when they argue, well, his feet look like a bear, and his hands look like an a ape or a, a monkey or so forth, they try to say his origin comes. That, that has nothing to do with this is a body of flesh. That he's just living in like a house. It's going back to the dusty earth. But the spirit is immortal. It comes from God. That's the image of God. God is the spirit. That man lost his origin in the Garden of Eden. His relationship, communion with God, was cut off there because of sin and unbelief. Unbelief in what? The Word of God. A picture was painted one time to Eve and told her how much brighter it would be if she'd just, just discard the Word of God. Look over here to reason. You can't, God, there's a difference between reason and God's Word. God's Word is true. Reason's false. You can't reason out nothing. That's right. Our mind not, is not good enough or never will be to fathom God's eternal wisdom. And therefore, you can't reason it. You just got to believe it. And so then the picture was painted out back there to our first father and mother. And they fell and that broke off relationship with God and was drove from the Garden of Eden. From that hour, God began to scream up and down the garden hunting for his, his lost child. And then the only way that God then could ever redeem him would have to be to make uh, to come down and redeem him himself. Not in another uh, not send somebody else. He couldn't send an angel. That wouldn't be right. But the only way God could redeem the man was come down himself and redeem him. If somebody sins here and my I was a judge of this of uh, this group of people, and I had the jurisdiction over you all. And if I, if someone sinned, and I said, now, uh, Brother Grimm, I want you to pay the price, that wouldn't be just. If I said for my own boy to pay the price, that still wouldn't be just. The only way that I could be just is for me, myself, to take his place, and what I was one pass the judgment, and then if I want to redeem the man, I've got to take his place myself. Are you still listening at me? Now look. I want you to notice something. Then, when this, the only way that God himself could ever redeem this man was to come down and take his place. And that was the law that was given by Moses of redemption that it had to be through a kinsman redeemer. A man first who was worthy. A man who was worth the price. A man then who would make a public testimony and redeem the lost estate of somebody that had fallen. And then God was worthy. He came down... Some 1,900 years ago, in the form of a baby born in a manger, 
overshadowed by the Holy Ghost, not born by sexual desire. He was God. God's blood was in him. The baby is always the blood of its father, never of its mother. We all know that. Without, I've taught that before here at times, and you know that the baby has not one speck of its mother's blood in it. Not a bit. No, nothing does. It's always the blood of the male. A hen can lay an egg, but if it isn't fertile, it'll never hatch. No matter how pretty the egg is and how well she warms it, it'll always be unfertile. It'll lay right there and rot. That's right. Unless the male bird has been with the female bird, and the germ of life comes from the male. Therefore, when Mary, knowing not a man, she was with the male God, the Almighty Jehovah, and he overshadowed her, and God is the creator that created a blood cell in the womb of Mary, knowing no man at all, and that brought forth the very creating blood of God to redeem us from our life coming in here, being born of sexual desire. And then that blood was drawn out of Emmanuel's veins on Calvary's cross, and the day has the same saving, redeeming, holy power that it did the day the transfusion was made out of Calvary. You believe it? Amen. 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 Now, that's right. We're redeemed by the blood of God. The Bible says we are bought by the blood and redeemed by God's own blood. How was it God's blood? God has no blood. How could it be? Because it was God's creative blood that he created in order to redeem us and came and lived in the same body that he created. Therefore, he could not, God had to suffer temptation. He couldn't suffer temptation. He had to suffer sexual temptation. He had to suffer uh, uh, all kinds of temptation. To be tempted by the devil and riches and powers and, and dominions and so forth. He had to suffer all of that. In order to do it, he couldn't be as God in spirit. He had to be God in flesh. Now I'm speaking this morning on the deity of Christ, so that you'll know who he is that we're worshiping today. Not a baby in a manger or not Santa Claus, but we're worshiping Almighty God in the deity of his Son. And notice then that blood came down, and was, and it was Christ Jesus. And God himself, coming out of spirit, went into Christ Jesus, and the Bible says that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Is that right? right. God himself, Jehovah, lived in Christ and was made a kinsman to us because he was born in human flesh like we are. Is that right? The blood cells were developed by God, and uh, the uh, flesh cells were developed in the womb of Mary that brought forth the child, and God came down and lived in human flesh and was tempted in every manner just like we are. Do you believe that? All right. All right. Oh, then when he did that, he freely gave his blood. He didn't have to do it. He made that sacrifice. He could have went right on up into glory. And he could have been transfigured like he was on Mount Transfiguration, went on into heaven and never died for us. But to be willing to die for us, he gave freely his blood at Calvary. That's right. And he picked out. He was a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. And he made a public testimony. In the book of Ruth, there's a very beautiful picture there. How that Boaz, type of Christ, how that Ruth went over a strange country as a backslide and went out of the land and brought back with her, I mean Naomi, and brought back Ruth. And when Ruth came back, she was a, 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 of the country of Moab. And when she came back, she was a Moabite. Absolutely a picture of the Gentile bride of the church. And when she went to leave Naomi, Naomi told her, said, kiss her and told her to go back to her people. She said, I will go with you to your people. Let your people be my people and let your uh, dwellings be my dwellings. Let your God be my God and nothing but death shall separate us. Where you die, I die. Where you're buried, I'll be buried. Now that's a picture of the Gentile church coming into Christ because we were once aliens away from God. Only the Jews was was the ones to be saved, but we being dead in Christ take on Abraham's seed and are heirs according to the promise. And Christ got a Gentile bride. That's exactly right. Now, in order to redeem Boaz, to redeem the almost lost estate, that was the back of the state of Israel, then Boaz, Boaz had to come out and when he did, a boy as rather, and when he came out, he had to kick off his shoe before the gates, of, before the elders, to make a public testimony that he had redeemed that lost woman and her estate. And in doing that, then he bought back also, he got in there his bride, the woman he is looking for. He had to redeem the woman first in order to get the bride, don't you see? And that's the same thing Christ did. He made a public testimony at the gates of Jerusalem when he was beaten, smitten, afflicted, and was led up Calvary's 
the cow of Golgotha's heel and bathe the heel with his own blood as a public testimony that he had redeemed all the fallen estates from back down in the beginning and has redeemed his people from the curse of sin and from the clutches of hell. And knowing that she would need something more in the last days than what she's got now, he said, I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll pray the Father and he'll give you another comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. He will abide with you forever. A little while the world will see me no more. But I'm going up to heaven to get this thing fixed up and I'll come back and be with you, even in you, until the end of the age. That's what I'm talking about. You still hear me say amen. That's right. That's what I'm speaking of now. Is him coming again in his power. Ages has flowed on. Oh, who is he? My, this morning they think of some little object of worship, some little manger out there, some little that. I'm not thinking of that. I'm thinking of Christ, the hope of glory in our hearts this morning by the Holy Ghost. That's right. Oh, condemned by the world. God has always come into the world when he did. The world hated him as it was in the days of Noah. So will it be in the coming of the Son of God. We're in that day, friends. And I notice, a little while the world will see me no more, yet you'll see me, for I'll be with you even in you, even to the end of the world. That's right, he's here now. And in the days how his big picture always revolved up and made the same thing come to pass that we're seeing now the great drama set, and we're ready now to see great things happen. The church has been brought from the cradle, that's right. Pentecostal rocked it down yonder a few years ago back there while the people throwed stones and made fun and laughed at but she grew to maturity now. That's exactly right. Now we're here. Hallelujah. That's right. That's what I'm interested in, to see God's church coming together now. We've been beat out here and beat out there, but the hour is coming when God's throwing the blanket around us all to draw us in. For the enemies at the gate. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. He said enough for his people. Daniel said the great things of the last days when these things come to pass. My, the great exploits will the people and the man of faith will do. And that day and the hour has come now that when the great drama picture of God set forth of the latter rain. Joel said in the last days it shall come to pass and I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy of all my hands made and made several I pour out of my spirit. And I'll show signs in the heaven above and signs in the earth below and pillars of fire and vapor of smoke. This shall come to pass before the great terrible day of the Lord shall come to Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus said in there, these things that I do, you shall do in greater this. For I go unto my Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's what he said in there. And, uh, uh, and uh, the word back there said, if ye abide me, and my word abide in you, ask what you will, and it shall be given unto you. A few years ago, the people around here said, you people up there, that tabernacle is holy rollers. You're all this, that, and the other. You're crazy. But oh my, we stood on that what was true the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And now the power of Almighty God is formed in the church coming forth. Hallelujah. I know he's going to shake the whole thing everywhere. Brother, it's already in session right now. It's going on. That's right. The deity of him. Who is he? Someone thinks him a little baby back there. He's the one that stood on the invisible. Oh my platform. Raised out his hands and spoke. Said, let there be light, and there was light that was Jesus Christ. Oh, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world recognized him not. He was he's the deity of God. Look what he did back there. Talk about the miraculous. Back there, he talked about shouting when he performed the miraculous things to make things which are now out of things which was not. He spoke, and it was so. And that same power, that same Christ. Hallelujah! That's the fun of it. That's the people who deny the power of God. Say it's wrong. But that same power that spoke the world into existence is in those people. It's not the Holy Ghost. Men and women, it's time that we found out who you are. The devil's trying to hide you back, tell you that you're some little cow down something you're not. You're a son and daughters of God. The deity is not in heaven to you. Hallelujah! I know you think I'm crazy, but let me tell you something, brother. When you realize that Almighty God lives in you, yes. it's all life. My life, I give Zoe. The life of God is in the human being. He stood back there. He's the creator of all things. He made life, frogs, all beasts, ducks, chickens, animals, created everything. And nothing was made but what was made of him. Who? Christ! He is him. He brought down flat plagues and everything in the days of Egypt. Who? Christ! He stopped the, the mouth of the lion. He quits the mouth of the fire. They take the edge of the sword. They raise the dead from the grave. Who? Christ! 
Oh, my. What was he? Who is he? Christ, the deity. The brother and sister, that deity is in you. Oh, I won't give you more than you shall see me, for I'll be with you, even in you to the end of the age. Christ in the manger? No. Christ in you. Hallelujah. We're not worshiping Christ in the manger, but Christ in you. The Holy Ghost, the hope of life. Hallelujah, the Creator. Hear what we shall be, but we'll see him as he is, or we'll be made like him. No room for him. People around here say they, they're of Christ, they're churches of Christ. They go to I want to have my side and open up the Christmas presents. Let's see about daddy. In there, there's a on the, on the Christmas tree of a many man last night, set a big box of beer somewhere. No room for Jesus, all for beer. Open up my friend. A deck of cards. No room for Christ. A card. That's right. Instead of a little Bible or something to the children, his little G-man book or something like that. No room for Jesus. Instead of going to church, he goes to show, dances, everything. He calls himself Christian. Brother, with the deity of God by the Holy Ghost. Comes into the human heart. He calls out everything that Christ has. cradling you. That was one time God was back in the beginning. Then he come into Moses. He come into the children of Israel. He come into the cradle. But now they're worshiping way back like some prehistoric something. When Christ is in you. Here he is today. The Son of God moving up his great church is moving. Today the church has soup suppers, pie suppers. See who can dress the best. Going to the church for pomp, glory. Who got the best church, the best seats. Who can play this? Who can do that? And no room. All times they got something else to do besides prayer. They can't pray anymore. They got something else to do. They can't pray anymore. They just can't learn to serve God like they used to. No room for him in the end. And this is in the end time for him. No room for him in the end. Of course, I know what that end is. But I'm referring to this end. But the Bible said in that day, when the almond tree shall flourish, the desire of man shall pale because he goes to his long home. And the mourners go about the street. Or the silver cord be broken, the pitcher broken, the fountain. Oh, mercy, my friend. But the prophet also said, it'll be light in the evening time. That's right, the path of glory you shall surely find. That's right, the evening time comes. The church now that has once pressed back, that old major experience that we've been through, has come to a place now that the people are realizing that the deity and the power of Almighty God is living in the human being. Oh, brother, sister, let me speak to you in the name of Jesus. Do you still hear me? Oh, my, let me tell you something. That time's coming when women and men are just about alike. They dress so much alike you can't tell one from the other. That's right. All those things in the Bible say would come to pass. It's here. That's right. You know that's the truth. Is it the truth? Is it the truth? Friends, 
the hour has come and is now that when God's great drama is set here before us, the Son of God that was in the cradle is in the heart now. He's the deity of God. He's God the Creator. He said all things, He was in the world and the world was made by Him. And the world knew Him not. And today that's what's the matter with the church. The hope of glory, the baptism of the Holy Ghost has come into the people's hearts and they don't recognize what it is. They think it's a little church joining or something like that. But that is the God, the Creator, living in you and giving you all the powers. And you're in possession of anything that He has. So is it in you to abstain from evil, to do good, to shun evil and flee to righteousness, to turn away from temptation, all malice, hatred, strife, envy, and so forth. Turn away from it. For that will take him from your heart if you will receive him, embrace him, and love him, and hold him in your heart, and love him, I tell you, the church together, and that kind of a power, has the power to bind the heavens, to give a stick over the eyes of the blind, hallelujah, the deaf speak of the deaf hear, the cripples walk, the blind see, why, it's recognizing the power of Almighty God into your heart, there he is, the deity. You love him. The word of the Lord said, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm bound. I was blind, but now I see. Dear brother, sister, if you haven't caught the baptism of the Holy Ghost this morning, run into the kingdom of God as quick as you can. The sealing time is on. The enemy's coming like a flood. He's raising a standard against it. The drama set. The church is going home. It's as church as anything. You have not always to wait for him. You haven't got all the time to wait. You better come now. You better make it today. That's right. While today is today, make it now. Remember, friends, it may seem strange. The world never, the religion of Christ never was popular. It's always been unpopular. The religion of God, because the devil is the prince of the power of the air, he has all the governments. Every government is controlled by the devil, according to the Bible. The devil said it was. That's right. He controls all the governments. And then the Bible says, Root, rejoice, all you holy angels and you saints upon the earth, for the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. And of his Christ and he shall reign. Satan took Jesus up on top of the mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, said, These are all mine. And I'll give them to you. And Jesus said, Get thee in Satan. That's right. He wasn't carrying. He said, My kingdom of this world, I could call her uh, any legions of angels. But my kingdom is not all this world. But my kingdom is in heaven. And he said, The kingdom of God will be within you. So therefore, the legions and powers in the back of the holy angels, hallelujah, is in you this morning by the deity of Christ. By the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Who are you this morning? Who is Christ Jesus? He's in you as much as you let him be. He's present, trying to get into you, to move into you today. And you stand off and wonder and look and gaze and hold back a little while. Don't do that. Move right straight into the kingdom of God. The hour is here. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love him. He's coming one of these days. I want to see him, don't you? I want to see him. I believe we will see him, don't you? He's here now. His power is moving. What makes the people cry and shout? Go on. What's the matter? It's the Holy Ghost moving in them. If they could only realize it and embrace it. Embrace the Holy Ghost. Believe him. Hug him to your bosom. Live right. Do nothing that would hinder him. Say, oh Lord Jesus, I want you. I want you to stand by me. I'm going to stand by you, Father. And as you do, he is just pressing to get into you. He wants in there. He's wooing you to him all the time. Now, praise God, I want to see the truth. I don't, people don't realize who you are. Every person in here can live above sin. Can live without sin. Living God, you'll make mistakes. But the blood of Christ will forgive you, Father. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Is that right? That same power of Christ that was hung on Calvary's cross, the same God that raised him up on the day of the resurrection, is in you now. You that's got the Holy Ghost. Oh, don't you love him? Oh, my. Hear his voice calling the day. Move him up to your close bosom and say, or close into your bosom. And say, now, Lord Jesus, I've been a little different. But this Christmas day, I realize who you are now. I once worshipped you as a little baby in a manger. I've seen you back out as a little bitty fella 1,900 years ago. And I thought, oh, if I could went up to Jerusalem. Today, they're getting past and everything to go up to the, to the cradle, up to the place where he's born, the same manger. But friends, it's not up there where he was born. It's right here where he was born. God has brought him down to every one of us. And his living being is living in us. Oh, the creator, the thing that created the world and created the heavens, created the earth, created man, is right in every individual. It's got the baptism of the Holy Ghost today.
That's the thing. That's the secret. Receive the Holy Ghost. He's in you. He's the hope of glory. And look here. In the Old Testament, as I've referred to it many times, when the contract was made, it was tore apart over a dead beast body. And those two contracts had to be come together. That contract had to dovetail one with the other. And today, God made a contract. Not because you were good. Not because you joined church. Not because you've been in a good ranking society. You can be ever so good. You can live a clean life. You can go to church every day. You can sacrifice every day. You can give a part of your money. You can give up uh, all the sins of the world and everything and live just as true and faithful as you can. And you will miss heaven just as far as east is from the west. That's right. It isn't by goodness that we are saved, but it's by His mercy that we are lost. That God born to make sons and daughters. Goodness never makes them. The Spirit of God makes them. If it wasn't so, he wouldn't have had to send the Holy Ghost. How could the Holy Ghost be complete? How could the, the contract be complete? Jesus said, I'll go away, yet I'll come again and be with you even in this. Pray the Father and he'll give you the Holy Ghost. He will abide with ever. And people put their name on church books, try to turn a new page on Christmas Day, try to walk down to church and pay a few tributes to the manger back there. When the Holy Ghost pushes in everywhere, and the world out and Church to take it out. Oh God, come, will you, and save the church 
Father, we ask that in his name, while you have your hands down, we're going to say, calling today. If there's anyone here without Christ, without God, without hope, would you come now? Call. Man, women, boys, or girls are without God. 
And I pray to Father to be merciful. And I pray to be merciful to those who have received. And I realize that you're near in their heart. And realizing the little things of the world seem to care to them. I pray, God, that everyone here this morning will be really concentrating in you. For the coming days to come, you know how much longer we're going to wait before you're coming. We may try to stand here. And as you're going to try to get saved, I'm thinking of those young people that night down at the altar trying to be saved across the line. No rejection for them, they were gone. Could not be saved. Father, I just, I just pray that you'll touch them each one. While it is time for salvation. That they will receive it today for me as it is. Let's stand. How many love him with all your heart? Don't you want to get just a little closer to him? Love him just a little bit more. Let's say, I, I surrender all as we raise our hands to him this morning. Will you do that? Give us a lead there. I love 